All right, 10.5 is multiple stage experiments. This goes along with learning target three. We're gonna be asked to calculate the probability of a sequence of events. So first we need to talk about um, the different types of events. We're gonna talk about independent and dependent events. We've looked at a lot of independent events so far. So those are when um, something has occurred that has no influence on the occurrence of another um, thing that's gonna happen after it. So like flipping a coin. If I flip a heads, that doesn't mean necessarily it's more likely that I flip a, a tails the next time or it's more unlikely that I flip a heads the next time. It's I have the same outcome or the same likelihood of an outcome regardless of what I did before. Um, so if you think back to when you guys were flipping all those heads and tails, um, although the probability um, changed with the cups, that didn't have any likelihood whether you flipped a head or a tails. You had a 50-50 shot every time you do it. Dependent events, however, um, influence one outcome will influence the likelihood of an outcome after that. Okay, it's also called conditional probability. So we, we talk about something that happens and then that affects what will happen in the previous or in the next things to come. So we talk about the multiplication rule, um, the probability of this happening and this happening and this happening. We're just gonna multiply those probabilities together separately, okay? Um, so the probability of A and B and C happening is the probability of A times the probability of B times probability of C, okay? And then this is a new, not new notation here. If the probability of, if we're having a dependent event or a conditional probability and we want A, B, and C to happen, well then it's the probability of A happening and then it's the probability of B happening given that A already happened, and that's a probability of C happening given that A and B already happened. So um, those are just different notations there. So the probability that a sequence of events will occur um, can be found by multiplying those properties. And we'll look at a few examples where we need to multiply. So if we are looking at flipping a coin, if we flip um, a fair coin two times, what is the probability that she will get exactly one head? Okay, so let's look at the probability of all this happening. This is not conditional probability. So we know that there's 50% chance that you get heads, 50% chance that you get tails. And then after you get heads, there's another 50% chance that you get heads and 50% chance that you get tails. And then after you get tails, there's a 50% chance that you get heads and a 50% chance that you get tails. So to figure out what the probability of getting a head and head is, we're going to multiply 0.5 times 0.5, and that's going to be 0.25. So there's 0.25% chance of all of these different outcomes, all right? Because there's four different outcomes, or because we multiplied this probability times this probability. Okay, so the question asks, what's the probability that she'll get exactly one head? Well, in this circumstance and in this circumstance, we get exactly one head. So 0.25 plus 0.25 gives us, there's a 50% chance or a 0.5% chance that, or not 0.5%, 0.5 chance that she will get exactly one head. Okay. If we look a little at another tier here if we look at three flips and we talk about the probability um, that she will get exactly two heads that's a little different here so again we had 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then here we're going to get 0 0.5 0 0.5 all these different chances are 0.5 our, our chance of getting heads and tails does not change here but what changes is that we're going to um, multiply 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. So we're going to have 0 0.5 to the third power this time, which is 0.125 or 1 eighth or 12.5 percent. Okay, and that's 1 eighth. There's eight different outcomes here. So if we have 0.125 0.125, and this is written wrong on your um, sheet. This was the probability of getting a tails and then heads and then heads. That's 0.125, or that's 1 8th plus 1 8th plus 1 8th. All together, that's the prob she has a 3 8th probability 
of getting exactly two heads. So we multiplied across and then added the different scenarios where, where she would succeed in that. Okay, so that's not conditional probability. Let's look at um, an example where we have conditional probability. So Cheryl is is shooting free throws. And usually when you when you shoot free throws, if you make the first one, then you feel confident, and so you have a better probability um, of making the next one. Or we're going to look at Cheryl in this case. That does happen with her. Maybe you are not that way. But Cheryl makes 75% of her first tries at the free throw line. Okay? So right away, this first throw that she's doing, we have a... Um, um, a good probability and a, a missed probability. So we have 75% chance there, which means we have 25% chance here. Okay. Now, once she makes her first one, then her likelihood of making the second one increases a little bit. After that, her statistics have shown that she makes 80% of her second um, of her second throws, which means she misses 20%. But when she misses the first one, then she is only likely to make 50% of her next one, which means she has a 50% chance of missing her next one. So the question here is what is the probability that Cheryl makes two consecutive good shots? Okay. So two consecutive, that would mean she makes this one and she makes this one. So that's going to be 0 0.75 times 0.8 which is going to give us 0.6, or 60%. So she has a 60% chance of making both free throws, okay? And you can, um, you can look and find the probability that she makes one, misses the second, um, that she misses the second, but then makes the, th or misses the first, but then makes the second, or misses both of them by multiplying across in these different probabilities. All right, for class, why don't you guys try um, to answer this question. Suppose you have a box with three blue marbles, two red, and four yellow. You're going to pull out one marble, record its color, put it back in the box, and draw another marble. What is the probability of pulling out a red marble followed by a blue marble? So think about the fact that you're putting them back in, and what does that do to your chances? Does that change it? Is this conditional probability, or is this not, and why?